Let's go back to the Elgin Winter Garden because then you were taken on as the producer of the space. Is that right? Yeah. And the idea was is going to be a commercial venue. How did that work? It was okay. It worked out well because I could produce shows. It was too expensive to rent. And I think that's been part of their problem. But as long as you're in there doing, um, I stayed for about five years. I did a lot of shows there. Um, and it's a kind of silly thing for me to say, but I mean, producing shows now for me is not that difficult because I know exactly what has to be. And I never even had a casting agent until Napoleon. I mean, and I go to a lot of shows, so I know who's out there, who's doing what. So all that part's fairly easy, and I know people I can depend on. Uh, I think coming in from the outside is a little difficult for some people. Mm -hmm. It's um, just getting a set in upstairs, if there is a set at all, <laughs> other than bits and pieces, is difficult. So would you say these are good times for commercial producers, theater producers in Toronto, or not so good times? I find the problem is there's so much going on that it's hard for people to pick and choose. So that's why maybe a title of something is more interesting than right. who knows. You know, it's just, boy, you look at the paper and there's it just there is things going, live entertainment everywhere. Which is good. That That is good, but you, as uh, your public has to decide which one to go to. So um, I, th I think it's come back a bit in the last couple of years. It's when we did Cats last summer at the Panasonic, um, I, I, I get so adamant about hiring Canadians. You know, we had 400 kids audition in one week for cats. Wow. And I, nobody's working. And my Anne, who, who played the lead, uh, you know, Grizz and then Saga, I mean, I said, what is she doing here auditioning? And none of them are working, the musical theater people. It's, it's shocking. And... Uh, but then again, we do have musicals at Sh Shaw, musicals at Stratford. Yeah. That's and never happened. When you were doing Cats, this no, was not happening. No. So the actual uh, musical theater uh, performances have kind of spread to other venues, but still. But musicals, it, you know, Cats did really well last year, because Cats actually, we had, had their 20 year reunion or whatever what <laughs> but to go to Sean Stratford is wonderful but that is a real right. expensive weekend by the time you go stay at three hundred dollars a night hotel and you know if you're gonna see two or three if you're gonna go all that way you're gonna see two or three shows and it's expensive and not I think there are lots of things on in Toronto where people just want to go and see one show and go home yeah and I mean, both of Shaw and Stratford are wonderful, but it's expensive. Yep. So, uh, two questions: Are the only are the only commercial theater producers in Canada in Toronto, or are, they also, are there commercial theater producers in uh, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Halifax? I don't know about the West. I know there's a couple of them in Montreal, in Quebec. I, I mean, they're usually all theater companies that have government subsidy, mm -hmm. aren't they? Is there any I don't know about? No, that's about it. Again, part of the problem is venues. If we had, I'm trying to think of a theater, like the Bayview Playhouse, for instance. Or the Bathurst Street Theater. Bathurst Street isn't good. As it, a performance space? No because it, it's not horrible, 
but I mean, <laughs> it brings new meaning to the word no lobby. I mean, there's nothing you can, I mean, it's, it's, it, but that space or like a Bayview Playhouse or even a Jane Mallet, that if it wasn't IATSE, that's all we need, I'm telling you, is a 500 seat theater. Um, and now, why is there not a 500 seat? If there's a need for it, why hasn't it been built? Well, who, who's going to build it? I, I mean, mean who the would Daniels risk the money? one down at, uh, does it Dunda, you know, where Regent Park, Regent Park is. Um, but if I had my druthers, I would take Berkeley Street. Downstairs, Berkeley. But that's 300. Yeah, well, you can't have everything you ask for, you know, okay. always. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, <laughs> my, the dream one would be the Bayview Playhouse. But um, nobody's building them. Every theater I ever used is now a Kentucky Fried Chicken or, you know, take out, I mean, Teller's Cage. We did really, and at Ports, we did really well. Yes, it was a dinner theater, but we got a lot of stuff done. But do you think nobody's building them or, or they all turned into Kentucky Fried chin Chicken because of the price of real estate in Toronto? Probably. So in fact, our real estate market has in fact squeezed out mid-level yeah. commercial theater production. They should be building, and if anybody would do it, it would be Mervish in his new, but we could all be dead and buried by then, so in his new Geary building. But he ha in theory, Panasonic is whatever, 600 seats, 700 seats. Yes. That's your mid-level mid, mid level space. Yes, it, it, it it's good, but there, we had to really work to get cats in there. The back, you know, dressing rooms and things are a little cramped, to say the least. Um, I, I see, I think Hart House works really well as a theater in that, because it's in a university, it's a community thing, and the IATSE knows when to pull the cord and not pull the cord, you know? It, it is such a fabulous theater. But you as a commercial producer would not use Hart House. Oh, I've used it. I did DQ there with Casey House. Right. Three I did Arsenic and Old Lace with Kate Reed and Charmaine King. But in the King. last five years? No, not the, but I'd still go. I sit on the board there, uh, so I see a lot of stuff there. No, it's a terrific theater to work in. What's made the Mervish model of producing commercially so successful? Subscription. I know that some people go just because it's on the, they don't even know what they're going to see. Are there any commercial theater produc producers outside of Toronto who work on the subscription model in London, in New York, in LA? I, I don't know. I don't know. I only know about a couple of the guys that work in Montreal. Because what I'm thinking is that Mervish may have made a hybrid between the public system and the private system. So we set up a private commercial theater producing system that has what we use in the public, meaning a subscription, to handle his risks. Yeah, they, they talk about, they don't have a lot of risks. I mean, they sell a lot of tickets. And, you know, listen, it's $9 a ticket on top of your ticket price every time you buy one. How do you mean nine? Nine for what? One ticket. It's a service charge. Right. So you're saying they've got a revenue stream in there just through the service charge, let alone the production. 